Hey guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Reading Bear, and I hope you are ready for some more stories. And today, we'll take a look at some new entitled people content. If you enjoyed my content, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel and post some bear emojis in the comment. And now, let's dive right into the stories. The first story is titled I was on the floor. So for some context I have severe anemia that requires I get infusions regularly. I pass out regularly from any activities from cooking to walking. Otherwise I look like a normal pale healthy adult. Recently I was shopping at that one store with blue shirts that sells it all. I did happen to be wearing a blue shirt at the time but it was a more turquoise less navy and b a cami top with spaghetti straps because it was 100 degrees outside. My anemia is bad right now but this was a necessary trip because kids have to eat. I am trying to take it slow. There were no scooters when I entered which I hate taking but it beats ending up on the floor. So I was trying to be extra careful. I came upon a younger woman with a small child. She was trying to reach up to grab something on a high shelf and me being taller I was easily able to grab the item. So I did so for her and continued on my way. About three aisles over I felt the fishbowl coming on. My head starts to swim and everything feels like I am underwater. There was nowhere to sit besides floor and it was sit or fall so I dropped onto the floor cross-legged and put my head on my lap waiting for the worst to pass. I hear someone clearing their throat nearby and kinda wave my hand in their direction to signal I am okay waiting for the world to refocus. The throat clearing sound happens again, and again. I finally lift my head to see this petite lady with white hair staring at me. I croak out I am fine just give me a moment but I was mistaken in thinking her intention was to check on my welfare. It is extremely unprofessional to sit on the job, I need some help. She was holding a cane and started smacking the ground with each word. I looked up at her unsure if my head was still fuzzy or she just really said what she said. At this point some other customers and an employee had started to approach to check on me. I told her politely that I was shopping and not an employee but she pointed her cane at me cut me off mid-sentence and told me she was sick of the younger generation always making excuses. My eyes rolled so far back in my head I am surprised I didn't pass out. The actual employee leaned down and asked me if I needed medical assistance. I explained to him that I had a medical condition, that there had been no electric scooters but I would manage I just needed a moment. He got on a walkie and I heard him say something about the scooter but the lady started again so I missed what was being said exactly. She looked at him and demanded he get, my boss, as she wanted to give him an earful of my behavior issues. At this point I think she was the only oblivious person in the aisle and we had an audience of like 10. Two other people had leaned down to ask if I wanted to get up or stay put. Did I need water, etc. The employee tells the lady that a manager is on his way but that I do not work here. She starts ranting again something about people lying for each other. At this point I am embarrassed by the crowd and just ready to leave. Manager comes out and she starts ranting at this guy. Tells him I was, personal shopping, for another customer and when she approached me I just sat down on the floor like an entitled spoiled brat. She then launches into a rant about how they had no electric scooters when she came in and how personal shoppers would be a benefit to her. Now I didn't have any glorious moment of telling her off. It isn't really my way. But I did get to enjoy her face when an electric cart was driven up by an employee and she got to see me ride off on it. The manager still explaining I had a medical condition as she began yelling about my youth and entitlement and being a bad employee. She probably still thinks I work there. The next story is titled, Clean My Table. I stopped by Costco for a quick hot dog and a drink. Finished eating, threw my trash away, and started to leave. As I am walking past the other tables I hear, excuse me. I didn't think anything of it since I didn't work there, I was by myself, and didn't see anyone that I knew. Again I hear, excuse me, only a bit louder and obviously annoyed. I turn around and not seeing anyone that I know or who exactly had been speaking, I turn to leave when Karen yells, I am talking to you. I need you to wipe this table off. I look around dumbfounded because surely she wasn't talking to me and it wasn't the table I had been sitting at. Not wanting to be rude, I asked her what she wanted again. Karen told me almost screaming to, wipe this table down now. Well now everyone at the tables and checkout lines are staring. I told her I my most pleasant and sarcastic voice, wipe your own ducking table down. I don't work here. She just stood there with a stupid look on her face as people shook their heads and laughed. 
I seriously think that some of these people need some medical attention. The next story is titled Wearing a Blue Shirt in a Store with Red Uniforms. This will be short and simple. No Karens in this story. My dad told me this story. He used to work for an appliance repair company. Their uniforms would be a light blue shirt, along with blue pants with the company name usually around the heart area. He would tell me he'd often go into a certain Canadian store to get parts for the repairs he needed, and he'd get a lot of customers asking him where something was, or for help, etc. He would point out a lot he doesn't work here, that he's wearing the wrong color and shopping just like them. But as you can tell by the title, the dress code for the store was a bright red shirt, with black pants. He still can't fathom how people would think he'd work there wearing all blue in a red and black store. The next story is titled Neighbors and their guests trespass on our property, kill our tree and garden, and insult us. So this isn't just one incident. It's a bunch of things that happened rolled into one post. So, we have these neighbors and they often had parties and get-togethers in their backyard. Now, there is fence blocking their backyard from us but our backyard isn't blocked off and they can still enter through their driveway. We have a set of swings in our backyard and often, we'd have teenagers from the party randomly coming over to our swing set. I wouldn't have minded it as much if they weren't breaking the swings. The plastic covering the chain ropes was ripping because they were spinning and twisting the swings around. We were very particular about keeping our swings intact because my dad had spent a lot of money on them and it was an important gift to us. My parents also didn't like strangers trespassing on our property, but they didn't like confrontation so they'd stay quiet and even sometimes stop us from going out to stop them. So my sister, my brother and I would go to get them off our lawn. They would insult us and call us names, it sounds stupid now but keep in mind that we were 4, 7, and 12 years old and they were 14 to 18 years old, they'd refuse to leave or even stop twisting the swings around. When our parents confronted theirs, the old wench that they called their mother simply replied with something along the lines of, oh, they're just kids. Let them play on the swings. Even when my parents explained how they were ruining the swings, refusing to stop and calling us names, the lady said, my kids would never do that. Another time, they renovated their fence. They put the pillars of the fence on our property and the workers trampled over our garden. The garden that my grandfather so dearly loved and had worked every day on. Again, when confronted, they gave a half-hearted, if not fake, apology. Another time, and this is more my sister's story than my own, but my sister would go sit on our swing set and play on her own, as a eight-year-old does. The neighbor's oldest kids would often bother her, even their youngest was 18, their oldest almost graduating university. They'd insult her or shout at her or try to scare her and when she tried calling for someone like my parents, they'd quickly run inside. And the one that annoyed us the most. So we used to have a pear tree. We loved the tree, it was big and beautiful and my siblings and I loved climbing it. When I was about 7, it died and the city had to cut it, the city owned it. We were devastated. We had many good memories with that tree and were thinking of even building a tree house in it. We always thought it died because the neighbors would wash their soapy car wash water down into our backyard and around the tree, which was bad enough on its own but recently, when we were renovating our house, we found nails hammered into the ground around where the tree used to be. The neighbors had killed their own tree like that as well, you aren't allowed to chop down trees because they are all owned by the city, and had gone out of their way to kill ours as well because they were worried that it would grow so big that some branches would block their windows. So, while we were sleeping, they trespassed onto our backyard and ducking hammered nails into the roots of the tree to kill it. I can't believe that people like that exist. The next story is titled Blargle Canine Lady. A bit over a month ago I was browsing pets at home for a new litter tray for our growing kitten. I was thoroughly choice paralyzed by the color options when a woman sidled over into my peripheral vision and said, you have Rargle canine? I looked to her, looked back at the cat litter trays, looked to her again, and said, er no, I have a cat. Feeling a bit awkward because I have some difficulties picking out words from background noise, I went back to my dilemma. But she stepped closer and repeated, Blargle canine. Do you have it? Sorry. I replied, still wishing she would leave me alone, and still not understanding the word before, canine. The food. I'm looking for rugal canine. She was looking at me like I was something unpleasant she discovered on her doorstep. Likewise, I just wanted her to go away, so I said, I think the dog section is over there. She actually threw her arms up in exasperation, which is something I only thought happened in novels. Royal canine. The cat food. 
I was catching on now and instead of saying something sooner I guess I hoped she would notice what I was wearing. A red button-up shirt. Exactly like the green polo shirts that pets at home staff usually wear in that both are pieces of clothing I guess, and a burgundy lanyard with the name of the school I work at all over it. In case you're wondering, the school is not called, Pets at Home Academy, but something much less amusing. For a long few seconds, we stood facing each other in silence, her glaring at me, me slowly lifting my lanyard towards her. I broke first. I don't work here. She shook her head and laughed. That confused me, but not as much as when she came right up to me, patted my arm, said, you could do, you know, and walked off into the sunset. I stood there for a while in contemplation. Was that an insult? Encouragement? I still don't know. I just hope for her cat's sake she managed to find what she was looking for. Godspeed Blargle Canine Lady. The next story is titled Karen hurls threats at me because I don't work at Target. This happened some years back when I was in middle school but scrolling through this sub just reminded me of it so I decided to tell it. When I was in middle school my mom worked at a Target a few blocks away from my school. So when school let out I would walk to the Target and wander around the store for a couple of hours till my mom got off work. My school had a uniform which was identical to the Target uniform, a red polo shirt and khaki pants. So this wasn't the first or last time I had been mistaken as an employee, but it was the first time anyone ever refused to take no for an answer when I told them I didn't work there. One day after school, I was doing my usual thing and poking around the store when this woman approached me and asked if I could open one of the checkout lanes since the lines at the other already open lanes were very long. Of course I couldn't do that because I didn't work there and told her as such. Now initially it wasn't an issue that she thought I worked there, for the aforementioned reasons, and because I had showed her to a couple items about half an hour ago. Since I was there every day I knew where everything in the store was so when people asked where things were I would go ahead and show them as I did with this woman. However, after I told her that I didn't work here she got irritated and told me that I was lying because I was wearing the Target uniform. I told her that it was actually my school uniform and again she accused me of lying and trying to slack off and said that I wasn't doing anything anyway so I should just open the lane for her. At this point I was taken aback and sort of stammering because I was a very nervous and timid kid back then and wasn't good with confrontation, especially with adults. I didn't know what to say so I just shut down and started walking away, which wasn't the best idea, I know, I was a kid, to which she then grabbed my arm and trying pull me to the register which shouting obscenities at me and telling me she would get me fired. At this point I started tearing up and she was starting to get the attention of other customers. A couple, I presume, came over and the man tore her arm off me while the woman went and got help. After someone came I thanked the couple and headed to the bathroom to calm down, and as I was coming back out I saw the lady surrounded by employees and trying to exit the store with a cart full of unpaid for things and saying that if no one would check her out to pay for her things she would just take it without paying. I don't know what else happened because my mom had heard what happened and came and let me into the break room. The next story is titled A Different Kind of Tech Support. I work from home as a technical support and fraud resolution specialist. I have done for more than 20 years, and basically look like someone's mildly gothy grandmother who can't be bothered to wear anything but black. Add long purple hair and a snarl, you're looking at me. I had to pop out after work today to nab a few things from Kroger. After 9 hours of dealing with stupid crap, I was in a foul temper, so I made a point of using the self-checkout. I wanted zero interaction. Lo, it was not to be. Excuse me, it's stuck. I'm plopping my bananas and grapes into a bag and not paying much attention. Also, picture Neil Gaiman's death, but with purple hair and a bad attitude. I do not look like a Kroger employee. I said it's stuck. I turn to see a dude trying to check out before I am even done. Hey, you have to wait for me to finish. It will reopen when I finish bagging. Slow down, I'm nearly done. Kevin decides to freak out. Get me your manager right now. My what, now, oh. I don't work here. He was not having any of that. Manager. Now. I wonder if he is still standing there? The next story is titled if I had a nickel every time, I'd have two nickels, but it's weird that it happened twice. I spent several years in retail, and I enjoy helping people. But sometimes, I'm befuddled that a store invested millions created a brand image, which includes a uniform color, and people are still stumped. Six years ago. I wore a blue polo in a store known for green polos. A very nice lady approached me and asked for help finding a certain section. 
I explained that I didn't work there, but I help her find what she was looking for. She apologized and we made small talk. Today. I wore a blue t-shirt and blue jeans in a store with red t-shirts, polos and khaki uniforms. I was pulling some clothes to try on. This lady approaches me. Do you have more of this in X size? I'm looking around to see if she was speaking to someone else, despite looking directly at me. Um, I don't work here. She responds, oh, I saw you grabbing things, and thought you worked here. No apology, nothing, and she walked away. Bonus story. I remember the first story so well because I bought a hardback copy of Starship Troopers, which I still have today, highly recommend it. The next story is titled Dude Wants Us to Cash His Check. I'm a retired investigator and this happened over two decades ago. I still find the IDWHL part amusing and thought I'd share it. I was called by dispatch to a bank robbery in which the subject threatened the teller with what he claimed was an explosive device and left a box at the teller window. Rather than wait for the automatic doors at the entrance to open he smashed the glass and fled. I arrived about the same time in which a couple of other detectives did and the EOD truck drove up a few minutes later. The patrol sergeant had set up two safe zones, one for the employees and customers and one for the investigative team. We went to one of the safe zones, which was right near the front entrance, far enough removed from the device with a wall between us. Some beat officers then replaced the crime scene tape over the door. About 10 minutes later, dude comes sauntering up to the entrance, worms his way through the tape like Spider-Man, crunches over the shattered glass and walks up to us. We just watched as it was so surreal that someone would do that. Well, he appeared to be on a mind-altering substance, wobbly with red eyes. He handed us a check and said in a sleepy voice, Hey dudes, I need you to cash my check. Now, mind you, we were wearing vests and had the badge necklaces. Plus, the EOD guy was in his marshmallow suit nearby, prepping his gear. One detective shook his head and told the man, Bro, did you not see the crime scene tape and the broken glass? Another detective pointed to our vests and badges. The man shook his head as if waking up. Oh. I didn't know what that was. I just chuckled and escorted him back to the entrance. It's not safe for you in here so why don't you go home and sleep it off? Come back in a couple hours. I'm sure the bank will be open again by then. A big grin lit up his face. Great idea dude. With that, he got back in his car and left. Nothing fancy. It was just amusing. Aftermath. The device turned out to be a box of batteries stuffed with wires. We got fingerprints on the batteries, ID'd the mope, put it out on the news and his mom dimed out his location and he surrendered peacefully. Also, the patrolman who was supposed to be watching the door got a talking to. So, I don't work here dude. If you enjoyed the video. Please subscribe to the channel and post some bare